All right, Grimmer, let's do it. Close the doors. Everybody out. Gotta get the boys in here. Just clear the hosts. Yeah. Clear all the civilians out. <laughs> Right? Hey, is, it, that a, is that a fair term? That is a fair term. The non well, that's how we, we when you used to kick the coaches out. We're having a players only right here. And this is going to be a good one, a positive one. Usually these are bad meetings. But we're, we're, it's going to be very positive because we're bringing in Michael McCarron of the National Predators. Thanks for hopping on here with us after last night. Let's just get to the clips. Uh, pretty big moment here that kind of changed some momentum or got some juices flowing in that game. You got in a fight in that game. Can you take us through it? Yeah, we were just... You know, we, we were playing really good the whole game. We couldn't seem to get uh, any momentum going. Uh, couldn't put one in the back of the net. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny, still part of the game and you just <laughs> going to the net hard. And that's what happens. And I was obviously fired up there. You can see that. But I usually don't celebrate after a fight. But um, the crowd seemed to, to really enjoy it. And I just, um, you know, gave, gave a little pump up to the crowd. It was good. They, they fed off that. And we were able to tie the game late. Well, you see right there, 100 pems on the season. I've you know, been following you since you the came in the league. century mark, yeah. yeah there yeah. you go. Wait. Uh, that's a note of distinction, right? For, yeah. Hey. Somebody that does what Michael McCarron Especially does. Especially nowadays, right? Like, yeah. you don't see it that often, right? Not so, really. you, you get to that uh, century mark. But I, I love some of the numbers prior to that, too. You've been a, a big-time player, depth player for this team this year. But I want to ask you this, because Stu and I were talking about it. Um, do you ever get in a fight and then go around town the next day and maybe you've got jersey burn or you've got stitches across your eye, black eye or something? And I you know, I used to think about it and I'd, I'd go to like the grocery store and people just look at you like you got two heads, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, what's going through these people's minds? Like, hey, you're a big man. Do you, do you have any moments that are just awkward like that the, the night after or the day after a fight? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that happens. Like, I would say mostly the grocery store, like you're going to pick apples and you got – scabs all over your hands and, <laughs> yeah. um, definitely definitely not like you guys growing up though like you guys went through went through it for sure you guys you guys probably had more more bangs than i did but than i do but um yeah it still happens from time to time like you definitely feel a little awkward um but especially in nashville like no one really knows who you are here so it's it's actually great so they're just looking at you like you got three eyes so it's, yeah it's 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 the south and uh, it's an eclectic part of the uh, the country just about anything just about anything goes um you know i'm really curious michael I, I know you guys were down by a couple but is is the stanley fight was that something that you kind of um initiated it would were you sensing like this is a moment where I might be able to step into the fray here and turn momentum a little bit. And then number two, this might be a really obvious question. It sure seemed to, because you guys surged back to a 3-3 tie at that, uh, you know, soon after that point, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, that fight actually, he, he initiated it, really. I mean, I'm, oh, really? I'm sure with myself, we're just going to the net pretty hard. And obviously, with, with what was going on in the game and the time in the game, like, um, it probably needed to happen, um, so I was more than more than willing to, to you know, answer the bell. And um, you know, when you go to the net hard, some some guys don't like that. And um, you know, like I said before, we were we were really controlling the, that game pretty yeah. well, and we just weren't able to to get any into the net. So I obviously obliged there, and <laughs> there I am pumping up the crowd. But uh, yeah, yeah it, was good. it was a good momentum change for us, and our crowd fed up. For sure. Does that does that part of you does that come out naturally? Do you have that in you, or is that you know something that's just kind of evolved over time and you recognize, hey, here's a niche I can fill. I can be this for my teammates. It's a it's a role that you know the group really um, values. But does that come naturally for you, or is it uh, where does that where does it come from? Yeah, I think I mean early in my career, I think that's really all I kind of brought to the table, and I really wasn't even that good at it like that's why I never really stuck around I just had cups of coffee and um you know once you can fill out your game a little bit more um and you can actually be a player in the league I think it it tends to just come more natural for you because you know you're in the you're in the heat of the fight um you know you're in, you're in every game you're, you're getting under guys skins with with how you play and um I think it comes pretty natural to me um you know I like to protect my teammates um I think it is a big there, – there's a hole that needs to be filled with that. I think we got a yeah. few guys on our team, obviously, Jeremy Lausanne, uh, Luke Shen, myself. I mean, we got Smitty and Sherwood who also like to scrap every once in a while as well. So um, just the way we play, I think the way we play, it's going to come. You know, we're, yeah. we're hard to yeah. play against. We're, we're, any, we're in their, their face-type hockey, and um, it's definitely good to – 
like you said uh, before, uh, it was a good momentum change last night. Sometimes you need that in, in the game. Yeah, and uh, I like that the evolution of you as a player as well because you, you see the 12 goals, the 10 assists, you got some points here. Uh, but this is a team now in, in Nashville that's been playing really well, and it's it's got – kind of production going throughout that lineup. And, and, and I don't want to speak for you, but just from my experiences and Stu, maybe you have had some like this as well. That stuff doesn't happen unless you are shown that you're believed in. You've got a purpose in what you go out there to do. I feel like Andrew Brunette has kind of empowered you guys, the depth guys, a little bit. Am I am I on anything there? Because it, it seems like you yeah. guys take more ownership in what's happening now. You, your group is starting on a lot of yeah. nights. I mean, really, tempo setting – you know, game tone setting starts, you know, talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, we have great depth in our, in our lineup. I think, um, you know, we all kind of play a little bit different of a style of a game. I think our fourth line, we're really heavy on pucks. Mm -hmm. um, we forecheck really well. And then, you know, we got our third line with Novak and Evangelista who are really skilled, but they play the same way that Brunette wants to play. Like, we can all play the same way. And then obviously we're carried by our big boys in our, on our first line. We got, uh, you know, Thacker and Forsberg who are just, um, and Nyquist even this year, you said career highs. I mean, those guys are amazing. Um, I mean, it's just shift after shift. And then you got Sisson's line with our two new, new boys, Zucker and uh, Bo. So, I mean, um, everybody's chipping in, which is awesome. And Brunette, uh, Bruno for sure believes in all of us. Um, we've all had our times uh, throughout the year. Um, we're, I think every single guy on our team has come up with with big goals at at, cert, at big times. So it's um, it's awesome to be a part of, and everybody's pulling the rope here, and we're all pretty relentless on the clock, which is fun to watch. Coming coming from a guy who got saddled with a nickname uh, at some point during his career, and it kind of stuck. It's uh, probably the best one ever, but go ahead. It kind of stuck <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, I'm fond of nicknames. Uh, give us some of the background. I think it goes back to Milwaukee, but. Where's the big show come from? Where's where's all that? Yeah, originally? the big show. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I like it. Because I like it a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The guys used to call me Big Show in Milwaukee. It was kind of like we were having a really heated rivals. I mean, in the minors, you play the same team like ten times. So we played the Chicago uh, Rockford Ice Hogs, I think, like three nights in a row. And oh gosh, um, by the sec, by the third by the third day, I mean, we all hated each other. You know how that goes. Yeah. Um, so then. One of their skill guys uh, chased me down, and I, after I hit somebody from behind, and I, yeah, and then there, there it is. I did the, <laughs> the spinning top. There the spinning is. top. I love it. <laughs> yeah, and everybody started calling me the Big Show after that. I got, uh, I got reamed out pretty good by Jared Tenorti, who was our captain at the time. But um, he had just got sent down for a couple games, and he didn't know what had happened two games prior. So. Um, their guy kind of showboated the, the game before, so I had to do something uh, after that. So uh, it was good. I think it, I think it's pretty funny that they still call me that to this day. Um, definitely good nickname. Yeah, oh, that's great. Hey, you know what just dawned on me to talk to you playing in Nashville? I see Gross Point, Michigan. I'm pretty sure that's where David Leguan's from, right? So another Nashville tie. He's from there, Leggy, right? Do you yeah, know? yeah, Leggy yeah. lives in uh, – I've actually only met him a couple times. I don't know him uh, – too well, but I know he's from there. Yeah. Yeah. No, Stevie, it's fine. Stevie Eiserman used to live there for years and years. A lot uh, back in the day, I would say 80s, maybe 90s. There, Is that where a lot of the wings? A lot of guys lived out there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. interesting. Hey, but hey, uh, talk about evolution and you as a player uh, contributing offensively more. That name, though, I, I've also heard has evolved to Big Sexy. So you went from Big Show. <laughs> A big sexy but we got some clips here and I, i'll be honest i could kind of understand why like let's just show the clips <laughs> as you're oh, coming rolling in here good style man oh. your style game's always that been good or what good. that looks good yeah, it's all right i got i got good suit game i don't know about the rest of it i'm too tall i can't shop anywhere <laughs> <laughs> right right Dub hey, double fisted with the old uh coffees too i like that oh well, yeah you hot yeah, you want new skates or new sticks, you better bring one for your equipment guy. That's Gosh, right. Hey. Yeah, take care of the hands that take care of you. Look at this look. That's I like right. It. That's now, right. My millennial would say, Big Sexy, your fit is fly. Did you have more fun with what you wear down in Nashville, though? Like, I mean, it's got a little extra flavor when you're down in Nashville, right? Anything Yeah, goes. Nashville's... Nashville's amazing, guys. I mean, I, I'm sure you guys have been here, but um, just like the down-to-earth people and, and yeah, definitely the way that, that they carry themselves, you know, blue jeans, uh, cowboy boots, and a, and a cowboy hat every single day. I mean, yeah. um, 
it's a pretty special place to live. Um, it's one of the main reasons why, you know, I wanted to resign here. This place is, um, it's amazing, man. I, I can't, I can't express how much I love this place. It's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I've been there <laughs> since 2001. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Stu lives there, man. That was, you, my last, hey. that was my last team. That's where I live. Hey, That's where I talk live. about the two big shows walking around Nashville <laughs> together. That'd be hey, a sight geez, to see. Gotta, but, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is what I want to get into with you. We're, we're just flashing seven NHL seasons and divided between me. I mean, there are probably more extreme opposites in the game today, but Montreal and Nashville, like, that's two ends of the spectrum. How do you contrast, you know, starting your career playing in a market like uh, Montreal, you know, storied franchise, original six team, but, but also um, between the federal and provincial taxes, they're probably taking 60 percent <laughs> bite out of your paycheck. Um, oh, yeah. How's it feel being paying federal in the U.S. again and no state income tax? That's how let's, you afford those just, hats. Let's those just jackets. start with take home pay. We're like in that. We're like in Nashville. OK, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's a huge difference, man. I can't. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but going back to you know the polar opposites, like I think for me in Montreal, it was kind of like maybe it wasn't the best place for me to be at when I was that young. I don't yeah. know how to really like the mental part of that place is tough, man. It's right. It's uh, but it, de it definitely made me into the player I am today and the person I am today. Like um, it de they definitely push you. Um, being a first rounder there probably wasn't the best for me either. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they expect a lot out of, out of those players, and I wasn't able to produce at the standard that they wanted me to, which is, you know, that's how they roll, man. That's 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 Montreal. That's the market that you're in. Um, but then when I came here, I mean, like you said, kind of previous, Mike, um, just the belief that like this organization had in me, um, even from the time I came here into the minors, it was just like we're gonna get you back in the NHL. Like we think you're, think you're. You're good. You're good enough player, and you can be a be a big part of this team. And you know, here I am, four or five years later, in the same organization with the same guys. Um, obviously, Trotsy's new, but um, you know, you got those guys like uh, Scooter, uh, Scott Nickel, and um, um, David Poyle, who who really believed in me. And it's been a it's been a great come up here as well. So uh, the guys here are amazing. The organization's great, and it's a great spot to be. Uh, just uh, the story just continues to be written for you, and it's it's uh, it's one of the, the great things. You see you nominated for the Masterton. Can you take us into that a little bit, you know, and what that means for you? Take us in maybe some of the fans that don't know the process that you've had to go through and and how you've, you're have you a better man today through it. Yeah. Um, obviously, like, like last year I had to go into the player assistance program. Um, I was having, uh, you know, some troubles off the ice. Um, and luckily, I, you know, that's why the player assistance program is there for you. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you see a lot more guys, uh, heading into it, um, the past few years. I don't know if COVID has anything to do with that, or if people just feel more comfortable with, with going in there, knowing the success rate coming out. I think it's like a 98% success rate coming out with guys. Um, so they do a great job, um, that obviously, um, your family and, you, and my wife plays a huge part in it as well. Like. Uh, I have a close knit family. I got a great wife and, um, you know, they were all, they were, they were able to help me coming out of it. So, um, it's never easy to ask for help, uh, no matter what you're going through. Um, but you know, the NHL does a great job with, with, uh, having a support system there for you. And if you need it, I mean, I'd be the first advocate for it. It's, uh, maybe, made me feel makes me feel great every day like I don't you know you don't you, you wake up feeling the same way every day and um you know it, it's obviously come out on the ice this year um I've been able to help this team uh, along along the year win win hockey games and uh do what I do best on the ice and give my best foot forward every day we saw an image of you there with uh it looked like your parents uh your wife and, and maybe some sibs talk about the importance of family uh, as you walk through this, Michael, because we, we understand that, uh, you know, perhaps there's always been a strong bond there, but that, that bond seemed to have grown stronger from your point of view where, where you and your folks are concerned. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, like, my, my parents, obviously, um, I mean, they, they, they were, they had no idea what was going on with me. I, you know, when you're going through, through some dark times, you try to keep it to yourself and which is not the way it should be. Um, obviously I was able to, to ask for help, but, um, no, if, 
my my family is uh you know my rock uh my wife olivia she's she's great as well she lean on her for anything i need um but yeah definitely through that whole whole process like it opened some eyes that you know even even your parents can't see sometimes really what's going on with you and um so just always be there for for each other um you know my brother and my sister as well they're there are huge support systems for me as well. My brother played a long time for the Florida Everblades. He said, Stu, that you dropped the puck down there one night for the Florida Everblades. Yeah, he, yeah, he did. I did. So, um, but yeah, I got I got a great family. They were through. They were uh, with me throughout the whole process and supported me throughout the whole the whole thing. So, um, family's definitely a big part of my life. Hey, you you're, cool. you mentioned your brother John. You, how was it? What was it like playing with him though? You guys played together, St. John's Ice Caps. Like that that had to be pretty sick. Yeah, that was sweet, man. We got to start a game together. Um, yeah, he he had a great career. He's a, he's a heck of a player, a longtime captain at Cornell. Um, and then he he was a longtime captain for the Florida Everblades. He won back-to-back -back championships with them down there in, uh, in the ECHL. He had a great career. And um, guys, we're still wondering if he's going to come back for playoffs this year to try to three-peat. But uh, <laughs> I think he's done. He's got he's to start in a family. And uh, he's got a one-and-a-half-year-old now. So... Uh, I think he's done with hockey, but that was pretty cool to play with him. Yeah, uh, terrific. Hey, we um, we we picked it up off the the Canadians website. I think there's some some video of you. You invited uh, the PR group, the marketing department, into your home, and uh, I think there was uh, your culinary oh your culinary skills yeah, we were go. on display. How's your uh, how's your food prep game? What's what's going on? What do you like to eat? What do you like to prepare? Oh uh, yeah, I'm a pretty good cook. I mean, I good. Not so much anymore. With, I'm pretty uh, good at eating. <laughs> yeah, Olivia, Olivia does a lot of the cooking around here now, but uh, I like to get in there. It's just something to do. Like, um, yeah, we. I mean, we we actually have a pretty big palate. We 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 cook quite a quite a big variety of uh, of stuff. So, yeah, no, there's not just one thing that I'm good at. I can pretty much do it all. But Olivia is a far better cook than I am. I let her uh, usually do her thing in the kitchen. If there's a if there's a dish you really want to prepare, maybe it's a special event or or something. Do you have like a go to? I mean, I mean, steak's always go to. It's pretty easy to yeah. do as well. It's, yeah. uh, maybe maybe a tenderloin, pop it in the pop it in the oven, and that's for a big big uh, big dinner. So that's probably my go to. Right on. All right, all right, hey buddy, we got one more little thing for you here. We're gonna show you some pictures or videos, and we want to know what you were thinking in these moments, or just kind of take us to it. So uh, we'll fire up okay. the first one and see what we got here. You remember? Oh uh, yeah, it's my first NHL goal. Uh, that was pretty special. I think we were getting smoked like four nothing at the time. That's late in the third period. I was able to tip in a goal. Um, that was actually Markstrom's first game in like over a year coming off surgery. I felt not bad, but still was shut out with like three minutes left in the game. That was a pretty good, uh, pretty good memory for me. Obviously, first NHL goal. I'll always remember that. Yeah, for sure. Did you guys win in that game? No, we got smoked. I think oh, it was like four. Oh, yeah. Gosh. What? Uh, who shot it? It was deflection. It looks like right there. Yeah. Who shot it? Nate Nathan Beaulieu. Oh, yeah. Oh, right there on. Go. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah. Right on. Uh, other notable NHL first, from what I understand, what were you thinking here? <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that'll always live in my memory. You know what? He smoked Lars Eller, and uh, I kind of, I had to do it at the time. It was probably not the smartest thing for me to grab him for my first NHL fight, but um yeah, that was a, that was a memorable one for sure. Were you were you aware of the Superman punch at this point that this he's famous for? No, I don't think he had done that yet. Oh, oh did, was really? it not yet? I thought he did it when he was in Van. To be did clear, we're talking about that was Kevin. Kevin Bieksa, Bieksa sorry right? for the Kevin Bieksa? viewers who don't know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he did. He did that, he did that for Anaheim. He did that That's against right. Peterson. All That's right. right there. Yes. So all right, good. Because I was about to say, man, you know, first <laughs> NHL fight walking the Superman punch, but it looks like yeah. you already passed that point because you at least grabbed on, so that was right. good. But that's a tough customer for your first bout. Right, we got another one here. Uh, this is a. I mean, these are some nice photos, bud. There we got yeah, some. Was, uh... You're looking pretty lean, there, bro. You're looking pretty lean. Yeah, that's right off summer training. That's yeah. right off summer training. No beard or anything. Yeah, what no, you, that was. What, uh, what's your typical playing weight? What do you What are you playing at right now? Two thirty-five. Um, 
I usually, like, I think I came into camp around like 240, yeah. um, 240 ish playing like 235 right now. Um, I like, I used to like Montreal used to want me at like 220, 225. And I was always couldn't do anything. I didn't think so. Um, yeah. I'm definitely a little bit, bit heavier now, but I'm also older and I've grown into my body. I have a lot more muscle mass on me. So, yeah. Uh, I like that playing weight. Hey, what about do you guys ever cheat the weigh-ins? Do you guys have Monday weigh-ins, dude? I was I was the best cheater on weigh-in days I in the league. Did. You didn't do it, never. Dude, here's it. It might not be the greatest for health, but you stop the night before. I stopped drinking fluids at eight o'clock. Oh, the man. next morning, no breakfast. Go in there, dude. You drop nine pounds. And I have. I remember. <laughs> I go. I'd weigh in. Sorry, Lou Amarillo. I I try to do my best, but uh, we'd weigh in. Uh, the trainer would weigh us in. I go in my stall and I have an egg sandwich. Hash browns all sitting there. I get it, just eat it all. And by the end of practice, at the end of practice, I was up about nine pounds. So that is the way to do it. But anyways. Yeah, those big boys can, uh, can can lose weight pretty quick yeah. if you need. Hey, we had to, man. If we wanted to play, we had to be at the right weight on Monday. But anyways, hey, I'm, I'm a big fan of watching you and what you've done. Uh, even a bigger fan now from talking to you. Uh, we appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Stu. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for taking some time, Michael. Hey, good luck the rest of the way, you and your Preds. Yeah, thank you.